Hey everybody, it is Team Absolution and Guest here releasing you another on the road. We are on our way to Atlanta. First we had to drive to Charlotte, which is, we didn't do anything on that drive because most of it was with top down. Um, but we are now on our way to Atlanta. I am the captain, of course. We've got the Irish god, Keith, making his very spare, scarce appearance. Mm -hmm. Behind me, through, <laughs> through no fault of his own, is the Braxton Express, hiding in ways unhideable. I think I can see you, but this is banned here, so I'll stay with that. And then in the middle, back there, is the Doombringer Griffin himself wearing his nice sunglasses. And then the guest, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> Say hello to the world. Hey, world. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're answering some of your Hi, questions Patrick. that we got. Uh, I'm gonna try to go as fast as possible because we gotta limit these videos to like 10, 11 minutes each. So Ryan, what's our first question? First question comes from Andrew Seat. He wants to know what the cheapest competitive dragon deck nowadays is, but it can't be from the GB era. So if the whole main build could function on its own and not have a whole lot of GB reliant cards, what would that be? And our answer for that was Raging Horn Dragon. So, Brax, tell him why. Raging Form is twelve dollars. Raging Form is twelve dollars, and you can run the bake, the break ride as backup. Yeah, and you can just run cheap uh, Revenger things as everything else. Yeah, because really. all the new stuff is common and not GB one. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and it's common. Yeah, that's the other thing is yeah. it's common. Yeah. Yeah. Value you town. Really need strides. So all you, you just gotta run, you know, Diablos and other things. Like well, else, everything is common. Yeah. So More times than not, you're gonna have your opponent dead before the stride also becomes that, a real like, factor. Form is just a really good card in general. So we would, we would just say Raging Four Dragon is the cheapest. It's a glass cannon's glass cannon. It's the glass cannon's glass Indeed. cannon. This next one comes from, uh, this is a combination of Samuel Bateman and another gentleman who is also on this list, and Antonio Pimentel. Both of them asked if we saw GPT-09. Yes, we did. We're excited. Oh, yes, yeah, it that? Uh, so, so, okay. Antonio's question was, what are your thoughts about New Shadow Paladin, New Thamos, and the return of Descendant? And all we have to say is, we told you so, we told you so, we told you so, we told you so. <laughs> told you so. <laughs> all right, and give my shout out to Brax for calling it with the Descendant play, Erad play, technically. I called New Thamos. Uh, I didn't call I anything. I called Reprint Thamos. I didn't call anything. And then we knew Shadows to get stuff. It was about Shadows. Uh, yes. Shadows. No. And Samuel Bateman's follow-up question is, uh, well, one, what would we actually like to see in the trial decks and GBT09? And then he has a follow-up question to that. So, what do we want to see from, let's say, Shadows? Uh, we want to see more Claret support, because you kind of just left it there, Bushi. What are you going to do with Claret? We want the evolution and the... His actual uh, stride. Yeah, Spell. and the Orgeist or human form, supposedly. Yeah, whatever. Whatever that is. Wait, Orgeist has got a human form? Yes. That, that's, that's the, that's the, uh... The new guy, the blue guy. The dream. Ooh, that's cool. Hello, Wait, dream? That, that's the dream. Want, Can he draw cards too? <laughs> I, want, I want more dudes like Hal that do things when they're sacked. Like Sharon. Yeah, that card's stupid. <laughs> I want to see more of that stuff too because that card was cool. Like, I want more generic things just like, oh, when this card is sacked, things happen. Like, when I saw... Well, I played Brax a good time when he's played that deck, the Diablo deck, and, and every time he does it, I don't like it because it's like, it's like good, but like at the same time, I'm just like, man, that's really techy. That's actually like a really well-designed card. I just think it's well designed. I want to see more stuff like that. I like seeing well designed cards, Bushi. From Thomas, I want something that does more on the first stride. It doesn't just put 5k and something else in the macro. Like, that's okay. But, I don't know. Give me some calling. Give me some, you know, something or other that allows me to actually get access to my resources. Or give me, like, a good, really good setup for Lambert. Give me I want, I want, Title Bore 3.0. I want, I want the Dire Earth to my, to my, you know, I want the Dire Earth and Aquaforce. Yeah, yeah, I want like Descendant I'm... to be a, the Descendant Grade 4 to be a perfect homage to Descendant. It's going to be Sack 4 Erads, right. Restand, get a crit. That is what it's going to be. You mean discard 4? Dis discard yeah, 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 it's not Sack. Discard, sorry. Discard 4 Erads from hand. Perfect homage to something else entirely. If it, does, <laughs> if it doesn't hit, Restand, get a crit. Though I do think that Ryan brought up when I talked to him that it'll probably be, it'll probably be like the that, uh, Discard four Erads. If it doesn't stand, if it doesn't hit, get a, a restand. But if it has Descendant Heart, then it gets a crit as well. I said that. Stop Correct. telling oh. me, Ryan. I thought, I thought Ryan said that. No, Ryan said that. I said it would be a next stage clone. Yeah. I don't and think it's it'll be a straight next stage clone. It's what it should be. No, it's not. That's three swings. And good. Yeah, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Keep going in. Keep <laughs> yeah. going. Uh, I'm say, I want to yeah. ask you. Where is Narakami on the meta list? Oh, it's all the way down here. No, <laughs> next thing, but I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm so sick and tired of, of 
Bushi because we've already seen you do him twice. I don't want to see him do third, third times the charm. I don't want to see him do it third times. We look at a sub clan and be like, "Oh man, we should probably bring this thing." Like, oh, let's just take this generic ass stride from Gear Chronicle and cop clone copy it to another clan. They literally complained about how good that was. No, yeah, that's why I don't want to see it. That's a terrible strategy. But it would be so good for Descendant. Get out of here. Yeah. Samuel Samuel Bateman, Samuel follow <laughs> Mr. Samuel Bateman's follow-up question is, <laughs> along with the latest anime episode, what are your opinions on Chrono Fang Rebellion and Demiurgus? Um, all right, the Deus Ex Machina. Everyone Which one? Demiurgus or De Chrono Tiger? Either, either one. Okay. Or both. Okay. Okay. But right. Cross Gallop is crying in the corner. Th thumbs up for Chrono Fang yeah. uh, Thumbs up for Chrono Fang Rebellion. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah. Bra Braxton is unconvinced. Okay. Braxton doesn't think. Braxton wants to see more support first. Of course, we want to see more support, and we feel the same about Demiurgus. Which is, yeah. yeah, it's really cool that you can stack the deck for half the game, but really, what are you going to do with that? And also, never shuffle the deck ever again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, it's cool that you can predict, like, you know, down to the, I can get two heal triggers and a crit off of this swing. And Don't touch those air waters. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. But at that point, you can't use any more time leaps, and you have to have Or this, any more earlers. Or, yeah, any, any, you can't use anything else that shuffles your deck. Um. But also, you need the 12 Zodiac Time Beasts, which we only have seen four to maybe five of them, so I don't even know if we've seen that many. So we really need to see how that deck operates and how you get all those things to the bind zone because they really need to have effects that either bind themselves or do things when they are bound. See, for me, I think that uh, I agree with everything you said. I just think that Demiurgus needs to be, absolutely needs more support to make it even closer justifiable. For me, Rebellion doesn't need as much. No. Because drop a card, buying a card may be an expensive cost. But, but well, damn, that, that, be, that, that a card an extra drive check can end a game. That card can be Urwater. What? That card can be Urwater. That's why they didn't. That's why they made a drop a card, not to yeah. find something or like uh -huh. CB more. Because you can, if you have the combo, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, but I also think we're missing out on the rest of Demiurgos. I think there's something else. Well, yeah, the anime is gonna have. I think the anime is gonna have something else. A body. Yeah. We need we need the body mm -hmm. to figure out what's going on down there. You know. Yeah. I mean, I've been keep saying there's more to the skill that we just don't know. Yeah, yeah. that's what I think. Maybe uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe Wincon. Oh, uh, Wincon. Is that a win con? You can only go win con yeah. when you can stack the rest of the game. <laughs> if you stack them in a particular order, win con. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, you stack them in the order of the Zodiac game. Yeah. <laughs> and our last question, real quick. What makes a deck competitive? So we've said, you know, over our state of the meta videos, over our damage checks on which builds we think are competitive, and we try to build those builds. And we have, you know, 25 odd decks between all of us. Actually, more like 30 now that Keith's here. Yay! Yay! 30 decks. So, we have 30 so called competitive decks at various levels. You know, some we'd call, you know, tier 1, tier 1.5, tier 2, you know, all the way down to, uh, we still have Blouse for some reason. But, hey. <laughs> but what makes our builds or the decks that we choose to play at tournaments competitive and what about the decks that we don't have like dark face do we not think that's competitive or how do we make our decisions basically you mind if i uh run that's all you run yeah. right here with this okay so for me and i think for the team i think and if i disagree if anyone disagrees but at the end of the day what makes a deck competitive breaks down to results at the highest at the higher levels and what do you mean by higher level? Not a locals. We're talking well, well attended, well attended ARG slash Bushi Road events across the world. Results, and not results generated in some kind of weird statistical lab where you generate these results by excluding certain variables, so on and so forth. We're talking about hard results. This isn't some ethical question where you don't, you can't actually sit down and look at these numbers. We have hard data as to how these decks have performed over time, what's made these decks perform over time. So, for example, the answer, do we not think Dark Face is competitive? Does it have the possibility? Sure, but our assumption is if it was a competitive build, somebody would have built it, maybe not us, because we're not, we're not the smartest guys in the world, but somebody would have found a way to make it work, somebody would have played it, somebody would have won continuously at the competitive level, and then it's a competitive deck. For me, it all breaks down to results at a higher stage. How does this deck do against other decks that are played at that higher stage? And really, once we get up to that level of the you know decks at the high at the you know that perform at the highest level, so if we talk you know Kagura, Shadows, Royals, you know whatever, all the way down the list to all the builds we have, 
tickets, then then we can talk about, okay, which deck do you want to play the most? Which deck do I like the most? Well, I like Kagero. So I play Kagero when it's good, because now I feel justified in playing Kagero, because I know it'll perform. And I, I can take my skill into consideration and say, I am a really good Kagero player, I really like to play Kagero. If it's competitive, I'll play it. If it's not competitive, why am I playing it? I have to have a really good reason to do so. What about, you, what about you, kids? Anything you want to add in the last... The I'll last say, second? just like, to kind of build on what Jose and Ryan said, is that with a competitive deck, what I'm doing with that is I'm trying to say, what deck if I bring to this tournament, to this ARG, to this Bushy Road event, that I will have a reasonable chance of top aiding the event if I have this deck. That's what I'm saying if I'm bringing a competitive deck. So that's all the time us. we have for On The Road 1, but uh, keep the questions coming. Put in the comments at hashtag AskAbsolution, hashtag On The Road, and we'll try to get to your questions on the road too. We'll see you in a bit. Peace. Bye-bye.